Hello and welcome to week 12 of Composition 2. Today, or this week actually, uh, we are going to be looking at getting some feedback from the research argument section of the research project which you have shared with me. So I'll be working on getting you feedback this week. In the meantime, you'll be working on your call to action and you'll be sharing a draft of that by Sunday. In addition, I have discussion board 27. Um, I think that's what it says down here too. Uh, I know they're not necessarily in sequential order, but that's all right, um, which is what do you need to know? So we're gonna be looking at our project as kind of a whole. What is the strongest part? What's the weakest? What do you think you left out? What do you still need to know? Um, how do you move from your research argument to your call to action? Do you know what your call to action is? And you know how is that going to work? Looking at uh, your call to action, you know what are the major call to or counter arguments to your call to action? How do you refute these counter arguments? These are important things because you have to anticipate and uh, expect what others are going to say. They might say, "Well, this isn't going to work." Well, here's why they're wrong. That's why we did um, discussion. I think it was 23, where you're testing out your ideas. And again, with the last week's discussion board, uh, looking at your arguments and, and what you know right now, that sort of stuff. So I do have an explanation of the call to action and a video about it. So please watch it by now. You should understand everything that we're doing with the project. Um, this project is taking you through the various parts of it, which um, we have the overview, the, the review of literature, the um, researched argument and the call to action. Down here, I've put some notes about your overview and review of literature. I've looked at them. The majority of them are really good. I'm happy with what I'm seeing. Your overview, when we talk about that, needs to be introducing the overall topic, provide some background. Um, it situates your argument in that background. That is, it, you know, you're providing some context. I want you to think back to the stasis theory lesson where you had to state the facts, define the terms, provide an evaluation, and then do a procedural argument. That's really what we are doing here. So uh, explain what you're going to argue and why it's important. This overview is basically a mini paper, a mini version of that paper. You do need to include references and citations. You don't need a works cited page. The works cited page will be at the very bottom of your project. And it does need to be written in paragraph form. I saw a couple of people that had it in bullets. Um, I also want you to try to make it as much about the topic as possible, not about you. Uh, so it's not really saying, well, I'm doing this awesome argument and I think this and I feel this. It's about the topic and why it's important. So you're talking about who's affected by the topic, who it's going to help with your call to action, uh, all those things. So that is what we are looking at doing with our overview. The review of literature is providing the title and author of your major sources. It's giving a short summary of the source's main ideas, and it situates that source within your argument or your call to action. How is it going to be used? You should have a, the majority of your, your sources. If you're using it in your paper, list it there. If it's something that you're not using, but you found it interesting to provide context or background information to help you, um, you can supply that as well and say this this source is not being used, but it did provide some good background. That's kind of creating a, a bibliography. But the idea is, how do you inform the readers of your project that you know what you're talking about? If we go to our course schedule, you'll see that, you know, week 12, it's all downhill from here. This is where things start to get really fast every semester. Um, next week, I am calling for your presentations to be due. Um, the presentation, I think I'm going to leave that as it is, is just a presentation of your call to action. I think uh, putting together your, your call to action will help you finalize your research project, which will be due week 14th. So that'll be May 2nd. Uh, that way we have plenty of time to watch the presentations during week 15 and then provide responses. We have a final journal, uh, what I wish I would have said. And then by that time, I will have your projects graded. The great thing about having seen copies of your draft and your presentation um, ahead of time is I know what your paper should have and what it might be missing. 
what will happen for your capstone. Your capstone is your final word. You get to respond to my criticism, my, my questions, and also the questions of your classmates. Your classmates have been seeing your topics progress and grow, which is really fun, I think. Um, you get to learn a lot. And uh, they will provide some final feedback. So that is where we are with this week and the bigger picture of the course. As you can see, it's just a lot of writing and research. We are done with our major reading. Hopefully you have your the majority of your research, but your capstone will have to answer specific questions and it might rely on uh, you finding some new research. If you have questions, please contact me. Some of you have, and that's been great. It makes me feel like uh, I'm really helping you out rather than just uh, throwing stuff out at you and hoping that you're getting it. Uh, so that is that. I hope you have a great week.